morning everyone. My name is Taryn and you are watching my channel, Nicoli Flower House. This channel is all about my cut flower garden. I'm located in zone 7B. The theme of this video is going to be how much my garden totally needs a makeover. You might notice right here though that the exterior of our house is finally painted. It is now white instead of green, and I was able to put the rain barrels back on the deck where they belong. I still don't have the plumbing done on them, but I'm hopefully going to get to that in the fall or the winter to get closer to my dream of having gravity-fed rainwater drip irrigation throughout my garden. I don't really have experience with this or know exactly how I'm going to attack this goal, but it's something I want to work on now that our house is painted and I can get everything in its place. The zinnia patch that I planted right in front of the rain barrel deck is doing well. I've pinched some of them. Some of them still need pinched again, and there are some weeds creeping back in. My tomatoes over here in the corner are putting on even more fruit and look good. They do need some pruning. I have some sick leaves on there and they need tied up to the fence as well. This bed right here has potential for new seeds. The dill I have planted here has completely fallen over and my basil needs pinched, so I'm gonna go ahead and pinch this. This variety right here, just some Italian basil is what I use for cooking and eating. And then the basil on the other side over here, I have opal and cinnamon basil. That's what I use for my flower arrangements. The dill I have growing in this garden bed has completely toppled over. The tropical storm Elsa that came through did quite a bit of damage to the garden. I'm not really surprised. We got tons and tons of rain for two days straight and things just kind of got blown over. Also, this is the first year that I've used Hortonova netting on my plants. So I think I just have some learning to do with that. I was trying to use some things that I had around the garden, so the picket fences to hold up that Hortonova netting, and it's just not tall enough to support these really tall plants. So I'm thinking I might have to try a hoop bender. I ordered a hoop bender from Johnny's Seeds, and it just bends electrical conduit into a nice, tall, sturdy hoop. They have multiple sizes. I got the one for garden beds that are three feet wide because that's what most of my garden beds are. This one's a little bit longer, so maybe in the fall I'll rebuild this box so it's more symmetrical with the other ones or I'll just have to use multiple hoops. Not sure what I'll do there. These bachelor's buttons also need removed, so I'll have the option to plant something new there. This garden box I didn't think was going to survive this summer. You can just see how terribly it's falling apart. I built this out of just scrap fence paneling that we had laying around when we first moved into this property a few years ago, and it's just falling apart. So this bed needs rebuilt over the winter, I don't like to do infrastructure projects during the harvest season, so that'll be put off. 
And I think for now, what I'm going to do is pull the grass out of here, pull all the weeds, and then plant some pumpkins because all of my pumpkins that I planted in the back did not take. They got eaten by vine borers. I just think they were getting ignored out there. I didn't go check on them, so I will try planting these pumpkins more near the house. The front half of this garden bed is doing well. It has Dara and Lace Flower, both the pink variety and the blue variety. The back half of this bed completely needs redone. I had baby's breath planted in here and it did not do well. I don't know if it just doesn't like our intense heat or I did something wrong, but I'll try it again in the fall, but I'll just take all of that out for now. This bed right here has celery and I'm gonna pull all of that out for a salad. And unfortunately in the rainstorm, my seeds for my sweet peas got ruined. You can see the seed pods turned black and I don't know if it's disease or mold, but there are viable seeds in there. I just am not sure if I should be saving those and using them looking at the state of the pods themselves. So I should have pulled all those off before that storm came through. We're only a few hours away from the coast. These zinnia plants right here are looking nice. I have some very small tomatoes along the fence line. And then this bed over here had cilantro, parsley, and phlox in it. My phlox did not do well. I will try that again, but this bed needs completely cleared out and I'm going to start over. This one next to it has a perennial plant in the corner. Actually, both of those beds have a perennial plant in the corner. I do forget exactly what they are, but they're both supposed to produce some kind of berry. I don't see any berries on them right now, but we'll keep checking back on them. This is my fever few. I've not grown this before. It's really cute. I really like it, but the stems are very short. So I'm going to try cutting this to see if it'll push longer stems. Above that I have sage which I really like for the scent and texture in my cut flower bouquets. And behind that I have stock. I think I'm just going to take that stock out of there. I do have a random zinnia that is growing here. I had zinnias in this bed last year so I'm happy for that and I'll let that stay. This bed right here has cosmos in it, and these cosmos, they're doing okay, but they're not really branching out and growing as prolifically as cosmos usually do. I know what the problem is, I think, for this bed is that it's getting shaded out by the tree above it. I wasn't sure how much shade this bed was going to get when I planted it, and now I'm realizing it's quite a bit, so I'll have to plan differently next year and put something more shade tolerant there. I also have the coral berry shrubs in there, and I think they would appreciate that shade because our summers are so hot. So maybe I just won't plant anything there with them. This snapdragon bed needs completely redone. And I will do that at the end of this video. I'm gonna tear all of these snapdragons out and replant. These carnations over here really need cut back. I'm not sure if they'll recover, but there's so many spent blooms on them and that's just not good for the plant if you're trying to do cut flowers because when you have dead flowers on the plant, the plant won't push as many new blooms. So I need to take care of that. These snapdragons, however, were planted in the spring as compared to that first bed I showed you that I'm going to be redoing. Those were planted last fall. So since these ones are on a later time schedule, they look much nicer and are less tired and spent than the other ones. So we'll keep these ones around.
On the other side of that bed is more baby's breath that did terribly. It did give me like one good stem and then when I cut it, it just never rebounded. So maybe that is what it's supposed to be like. I thought it was cut and come again, but maybe it's not. My poor roses look absolutely terrible right now. They're still getting heavily damaged by, these are actually Japanese beetles. I thought these were June bugs, but thankfully one of my kind viewers pointed that out to me. So these are Japanese beetles. They're still destroying my roses and they've moved on to my dahlias, unfortunately. These roses are also suffering from some fungal damage, which is just common in my area because of all the rain and humidity. Another thing I can do to help these roses out is get these weeds out of here. This is just grass and I will pull the grass out. And also there's a lot of strawberries and they're starting to take off and produce runners which in some cases is good, but in this instance, I really need to control how many plants there are. So I am going to tear these out. That's kind of hard to do. I know they're viable plants, but I can't have them spreading throughout this entire garden bed. I need them to stay in their little corner down here. So I will be thinning these out. I could try to root these somewhere else and transplant them, but honestly, I don't really have a spot ready for them and I kind of know myself, I kind of get overwhelmed when I have too many plants and nowhere to put them. So I think the best thing for me to do is to just compost these and feed them to my worm composting system and let them eat these wonderful strawberry plants and give me some beautiful compost in return. I do have some gumfrina that are starting to come on. They are coming on a lot later than they did for me last year. I did have some trouble getting the seeds to germinate, so that might be why they got planted a lot later. These bachelor's buttons are starting to shoot off new blooms, but the stems are very short. So I'm wondering if that'll improve or if these are just too tired to come back. These bachelor's buttons I had planted way, way too close together to use, so I decided to cut them back to see what would happen. The pollinators really like them, so I'll probably leave it there. Right here in the pathway next to that orlea that's completely spent and gone to seed, I have a little baby spider, a garden spider. She's much smaller than the one I had last year, but I'll just have to keep an eye on her and remember that she's there in the pathway and not walk through her web. She is a very welcomed guest in my garden. She'll eat many, many bugs for me. This garden bed over here is pure chaos. This is my new Queen of Sweden rose that is just being annihilated by Japanese beetles. And behind that, I have red spike amaranth and red hibiscus foliage. These plants are massive. There's something about rain and storms that just kind of turn your garden into a complete jungle. And I've reached that point in the summer where my garden has become wild and I feel like I can really no longer control her. There's a lot of stuff in here that I can't really use just because it's gotten so big. It's overtaken the pathway and I just need to take care of this. This chamomile I've killed. I don't know what I did to it, but I'll be taking that out. And I also may remove or maybe try to transplant this chives plant somewhere else. I think it's just too close to this rose. And these chrysanthemums have maybe doubled in size since last year, which is good. They're very prolific, but I feel like they're kind of taking over my rose. This is an oregano branch kind of stuck in the middle. Within this, I have eucalyptus, I have thyme, there's even a rosemary plant down in here. 
And back behind this garden bed in the one behind it, I have some marigolds. They're Kilimanjaro marigold. And I haven't been able to use those because I can't even get to them because this herb bed is so crazy. So something probably needs to be done about this just so I can get better use out of my plants. And with all this pruning and cleaning up that I need to do, I'm going to do a set of 24 mini arrangements that I'm going to sell. If you're interested in seeing more about that, let me know in the comments below. I don't do farmer's markets per se. I just have a list of regular customers that I contact when I have flowers. Another thing that I like to do is just make up a bunch of arrangements and take them to work with me. And I set them in our break room, just kind of like an honesty box thing. And they almost always sell out. So I'll be making a ton of these mini arrangements. I'll probably price them at either five or $10 with all of the stuff that I'm pruning out of the garden. And if you want to see that again, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video about that. My cucumbers and tomatoes are really starting to take off, but I also have evidence of bug damage. You can see a caterpillar is living here on my straw flower plant, so I don't know if I'll get any more usable flowers off of this. So that might also be on the chopping block. Here is another tomato plant, and here is a giant hole. And what was there in that hole was my sunflowers. The sunflowers did not survive Storm Elsa. She tipped them over. So I unfortunately had to take those sunflowers out. But I have nearly 90 more days left in my growing season. So I can certainly plant another round of sunflowers if I'd like to try that. I just need to pay really close attention and pick smaller branching varieties with a quick turnaround time. Strawberry Hill has some buds on her, but no blooms. They've been eaten by Japanese beetles. But you will notice that my teepee trellis that my husband built for me is still standing despite the storm. It didn't even move. So I just, I'm so happy with that structure. And maybe I'll add more of these throughout the garden beds. The pincushion or scabiosa flowers right here are doing really well. They're unfortunately being taken over by a cherry tomato plant. So I will be rescuing these flowers and getting this plant more controlled and pruned back and tied up. So I definitely want the flowers to survive here. This next garden box has a lot of food plants in it and not as many flowers. Actually, the only flower in here is a rose. So I have leeks followed by some Swiss chard, which is doing quite well. My kale is very chewed up, so I'll be cutting that back and seeing if it grows back. It should. And then here's a rose that needs some love and attention. And just beyond that is the cilantro. And this needed to come out and actually I've already taken it out since I've shot this video. So that rose has plenty more space now. The cilantro is gone. I cut all of the blooms off of it and we'll be using those in my mini arrangements that I'll be making. It is such a pretty rose though. Look at this color on this bloom. I love it. It is a David Austin rose and the variety is Thomas A. Beckett.
This garden box down here has a bunch of snapdragons that are very short and wimpy. I was not happy with that variety, so I'll be taking them out. That Dara behind there is spent, so I'm gonna be cutting all the little green pods off of it, using those in my mini arrangements as well. And I do have a couple purple bachelor's button plants down here on the end. Hopefully those will grow and branch out. This bed is looking really tired, so I think I will add some of the horse manure that I have obtained from one of my friends to this bed to give it some life. The horse manure has been aged for three years, so it's gloriously ready to be put in the garden bed. This calendula is way overdue to be removed, so that's coming out as well. These dahlias are looking nice. I am not sure on the variety. The plant tag I have for this is just buried within the foliage and I couldn't find it, but very nice. I'm happy with how these are going. I'm going to need to add some of those new hoops that I was talking about with the hoop bender because these plants are gonna get much taller very quickly. And obviously we've seen that my little picket fences are just not enough support. Now this spot back here in the back with the cosmos in it is doing much better than the one in the front. It's getting full sun. There are a lot of weeds and grass in here that I need to take care of. This dark cranberry variety in the back, I absolutely love it. It has huge blooms. It's double click cranberry, but I've noticed that the stems aren't really supporting the weight of the flowers and they're kind of flopping. So I really like using those in vase arrangements to kind of drape over the sides, but I'm having trouble getting a lot of use out of them for that reason. So I'm not sure if there's something I can do about that. I did have to take all the gladiolas out of this back bed. They got destroyed by the storm. We're laying all over the ground. They need more support. These right here are a new flower for me. They're called hyssop or hyssop. I'll try to put that up on the screen for you. The pollinators absolutely love these. It is just completely buzzing and it's covered in bees, which I love seeing that. So I did cut and use these in arrangements, but I'm taking them very sparingly so they can have their fair share. The hollyhocks need to come out of this bed. They've been eaten by animals, but here is a winter berry plant and I'm definitely getting berries this season. I'm so excited. This is the first season that I'll get any kind of berries on any kind of plants. I've been trying to get berries forever, it feels like, but these will turn nice and bright red in the fall. I'm so excited about it. This one doesn't have berries on it, but I think this is my male pollinator plant, so I'm not sure if it would get berries. And buried in this clump of grass is another one, so this one is just too young, I think, and it's being suffocated by this grass, so it needs rescued very badly. So that's high on my priority list to take care of. This garden box right here also has a tiny baby winterberry plant in it that needs rescued. There's a ton of weeds and there's also carrots in here that are going to flower. And if you notice, these flowers look an awful lot like Queen Anne's lace and Dara and the parsley flowers. That's because they're all related. So when a carrot goes to flower, it doesn't really produce a good root or carrot to eat but the flowers are quite pretty. So maybe I should leave some of those carrots in there so I can get more of these white flowers. 
because my Dara is also a wild carrot kind of flowering thing, but it's producing the pink and purple flowers. These ones have white flowers, so that might be a nice addition. And here is the buried winterberry shrub, so I need to at least take some of the carrots out that are nearby it. And now let's just distract ourselves from all those weeds everywhere to the other side of the garden bed, which is the dahlia patch. These are Wizard of Oz dahlias. It's one of my favorite varieties. I'm so happy to see that there in the corner. Now these dahlias, despite my T-posts and Hortanova netting, some of them are still falling over. I think maybe I need some taller T-posts. Some of them are on the short side and then also maybe a second layer of Hortanova. I've had trouble doing the corralling method. I've tried that before and it seems like anytime I corral something when the twine I'm using gets wet, it stretches and things fall over anyways. So honestly, I'm trying to think outside of the box and if there's any kind of different solution to help these flowers stay upright. Some of them are staying upright just fine, like these gorgeous orange flowers right here, but some of them are still flopping. So I need to figure that out at some point. It's definitely an improvement over last year where I had zero support on my dahlias and they were literally laying all over the ground. And I was just hoping and praying that I could get the dahlia tubers to survive the season. And obviously I got very lucky and they did. So that's where these tubers came from, where, my, where all the tubers from my garden last year. And you can look back at previous videos I did it is a risk what I did. I saved my tubers from the previous year, but I didn't store them inside. I dug them up and just moved them to different garden beds over the winter time, and I let them stay out over the winter. In zone 7B, we're on the border of whether or not you need to dig your dahlia tubers. So there was a risk that none of these would come back, but they all, well, I wouldn't say all of them. I would say 80% of them came back, which is lovely. And because it's just kind of a mishmash of what I moved from my back garden to this new dahlia patch, I don't know any of the varieties. Um, some of them I recognize, like that Wizard of Oz, some of the Cafe Olays and stuff like that, but not all of them. This poor dahlia here has some bug damage. The garden is very buggy right now. I'm not sure if that'll improve once the weather dries up a little bit or if my plants just need fed but I don't spray anything, so this is a consequence of that, but I'm also hoping to attract beneficial insects and balance out the biology in the garden by just letting the garden take care of herself by making sure I have healthy soil and healthy plants. So instead of using pesticides and that kind of thing, I'm focusing more on feeding the soil with things like the horse manure, keeping it mulched and not tilling it. You can see in these pathways, the water runoff has displaced a lot of the mulch and also the grass has kind of taken this over and I don't think I'm gonna fight that anymore. I think I'm going to allow the grass to take over the pathways. I'm going to need to fight the battle to get my garden beds rid of the grass. This one here, I do have some echinacea tucked in here along with some Siberian elm because I was trying to create a privacy barrier between us and our neighbors just to give each of us some more privacy. But you can see this garden bed is absolutely inundated with grass and weeds. Here's an absolutely lovely dahlia surviving and popping out of there. It is so unique and beautiful and I don't even remember planting this here. Sometimes when I have like pieces of tubers and things that I find, I'll plant them to see what happens. So I'm guessing that's what I did here but I am not even sure if I can rescue this garden bed. There's so much grass growing in it. 
What do you think I should do? Let me know in the comments below. I really wanted to plant a bunch of things in here like snapdragons and cosmos and zinnias. But as you can see, this one has really gotten away from me. This garden bed back here is an old dahlia bed. So this is where I dug all the dahlias from, these in-ground garden beds in the back. But anyways, squash bugs and vine borers have completely destroyed everything I planted in here. It was all butternut squash and spaghetti squash and acorn squash, all kinds of different things, and a lot of pumpkins, and none of them have really survived. So that's why I'm going to plant some closer to the house I wanted to let them ramble all through this area here and allow the vines to root into the ground to offer them more protection from vine borers. If you bury a section of a pumpkin or squash vine, it will grow roots into the ground. So if vine borers take out the main stem, there's nutrition and life still getting to the fruits and they still have a chance to ripen. So that's what I was hoping would happen, but they didn't even make it that far. I've heard strategies of trying to bury the stems to protect them from vine borers, so maybe I'll give that a try. Up here in this garden bed are my Rudbeckia. I'm so happy with these. I didn't have them last year. They kept getting eaten by critters because I had them in a ground level bed, so this year I put it in one of the taller boxes. This variety here is just starting to come on with the reds and the purples, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really happy with these. And another thing is the green mesh. I don't like that green mesh. That was something I had laying around that I wanted to try and use instead of Hortonova. And the squares, the openings are just too small. So after the season's over, I really want to replace all of the green mesh and wood pickets and all that kind of stuff with new hoops and Hortonova. So everything is just better supported. These are the stems of the sunflowers that came out of this bed. The stems didn't break. They all just tipped over and kind of fell into the garden beds surrounding them. This tomato here has some damage on it. I don't know if this is from faciated blossoms or something like that, but I'll just have to keep an eye on this plant. Any kind of damaged fruit I like to pull off so that the plant doesn't waste energy producing something that's going to rot anyway. There's also a cafe au lait dahlia in there that got buried by the tomato plant. I'm not sure if it'll produce any blooms for me or not. This is Jewels of Opar. It's just starting to take off and I really love it. Behind the Jewels of Opar, I have Silene Blushing Lanterns. And these were really thriving a couple of weeks ago, but now they're looking a little tired. So I'm going to do a hard cut on these or just remove them. I have 90 days left in my growing season, so I'll just have to see if that's enough time to plant a second sowing of those or not. and more Japanese beetles on my roses. This is Desdemona. She's already rebounding faster than the other roses, so I'm gonna go in and prune this. It doesn't have as much fungal damage in, as the other ones and is doing quite well, all things considered that she's dealing with. There's also a lot of cleaning up to do in the dahlia patch. We have absolutely beautiful blooms mixed in with completely dead and rotting blooms that need cut off. So I'm sure the plants will rebound. 
The garden will probably look pretty bare after I get done cleaning it up and giving her the makeover, but she really needs it. She won't have a lot of blooms afterwards, but it's not too late in the season. I'm not giving up on her. She just needs kind of a refresh and a restart. So a lot of stuff will be trimmed back, pruned down, removed, and I'll plant new seeds and just be really excited for what's going to come in the fall. And a lot of my zinnias and cosmos are just starting to get going. So those should be taking off as well to help fill in some of the gaps. This is Celosia right here, mixed in with some zinnias. I love the way this garden bed is turning out. The zinnias are kind of being taken over by the Celosia though, so maybe I need to thin that out a little bit and give them some more space. There's two different kinds of Celosia growing in here. The shape of this one is called a fan. There's all different names for these types of Celosia. I haven't grown the fan types before, and I didn't even think I planted these, but when I looked at my seed packet, I think it's a mixture. So I am getting the spikes in the fans mixed together in this garden bed, and it's not something I would have chosen, but I actually really like it and I'm surprised. So, and I'm going to use them both in my arrangements coming up here. Okay, we're gonna take that damaged tomato that we found earlier and take it back to the compost. When I did take the sunflowers back there, there were still a ton of bees and pollinators on them. So instead of just throwing them into my compost bin, I just kind of laid them across the top so that the bees and pollinators could still get to them if they wanted to. I don't know how useful this is. Tell me what you think in the comments you know, even though they were cut from the plant, they were still very interested in all of the pollen. So I don't know how long the pollen will be good for once you cut the flowers off, but I just laid them across here so that the blooms were still available to the bees if they wanted it. And as promised, let's go ahead and start the garden makeover right now and rework this Snapdragon bed. At first, I was trying to leave the Hortanova netting on here, so I kind of struggled through with it the whole time I was trying to get these Snapdragons out. And then you'll see toward the end, I just realized it wasn't really working. So I had to untangle my coral berry shrubs from the Hortanova and take it off. What I might do is something similar to what I've done with the roses and just stop the Hortanova netting before I get to the perennial shrubs at the end. So I can put my hoops right before those shrubs. And it's hard to even tell that those shrubs are there until I get all the snapdragons out. So I'll be giving those shrubs more space and not planting quite as near them.
After I removed the Hortanova netting and took down the bamboo stakes, I was just breaking up the mulch that was left in here. It wasn't very much, but I broke it up and then I took out any large chunks. I went back and got some of the horse manure and I spread that around in here and worked it into the first couple inches or so of the soil. I didn't want to dig too much, so I'm mostly just spreading it around on the top. Next, I'll plant these seeds in there, and these are all different varieties of zinnias. These all have a maturity date of around 85 to 95 days, so hopefully I'll get these before our first frost. I'm hoping too that these are gonna take off a lot faster than the first round because zinnias love hot weather. So these should bloom faster than my previous ones did that I planted out in the spring since we had such a cool spring. After I got these watered in, I did cover this garden bed up with just one layer of Agrabon. This is actually frost cloth, but it does protect from the heat of the sun a little bit. I'm thinking it might keep the garden bed from drying out as fast. And I also have a very curious dog that likes to dig in the dirt. You've seen her throughout all of our videos. But anyways, she's very curious and would probably love to run through there and dig in it if I didn't have it covered up. So once the seedlings sprout and are big enough for me to mulch around, I will mulch around them to protect the soil. She won't really dig in the mulch, so that's good. Well, that is the end of today's garden tour and the start of the garden makeover. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If there's something else that you'd like to see a video on or have a comment on, please leave me feedback below. I love hearing from everyone and I try to respond to as many comments as I can. Thank you so much for watching and the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower loving friends. I'll see you next week. Bye.